Uh, Assalamu alaikum, uh, everyone. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, all protocols observed. Uh, may I have the slides up first? So, so following on from our minister's speech, where I was really delighted that the 12th Malaysia Plan had a real strong focus on uh, environment, on sustainability, and also planetary health, uh, a, a field that is fairly new, and the Sunray Center for Planetary Health is obviously also brand new, it's three, three months old, but we are now the first country, I think, in the world, Niloy will agree, that has mentioned planetary health in its uh, economic development plans. So today, let me share a little bit about planetary health, why it matters, and why it also makes sense to have a planetary health approach in economic planning. Next, please. When we think about health, most of us imagine health in a clinic setting or in a hospital, uh, you know, diseases that we face. And of course, in Malaysia, we are an extremely unhealthy country where, where one in four people have hypertension. Uh, Non-communicable diseases is extremely high and, uh, you know, diabetes. Uh, and we are an aging population as well. But the composition of health or the determinants of health are not in the medical care complex only. Only 5% of our health is determined genetically. 20% are behavioral uh, in nature. The determinants which are and social and environmental uh, determinants are also 55%, which means if you want to have good health, you need to ensure that your behaviors support a healthy lifestyle, the social conditions uh, in the in the social context is also favorable to health, and very importantly, the environmental protection is key. Next, please. So let me introduce to you a concept called planetary boundaries. And this is something that was developed by the Stockholm Resilience Center, where it was identified that there are nine elements that form our planetary boundaries. They are, as in the in the, in the uh, in the in the picture or the illustration shown here, a range of issues from climate change, biosphere integrity, land system change, freshwater use, bio, bio geochemical flows, ocean acidification, atmospheric aerosol loading, and stratospheric ozone depletion, and of course, novel entities. Now, what it means is that for human human beings or for humanity. To survive and thrive, we need to live within these planetary boundaries. We need to be in that green zone. And if in, your, in the green zone, you're safe. In, your, in the yellow zone, you're a little bit uncertain and you're already increasing risk. And beyond that, in the red zone, is a zone of uncertainty. Next. A new concept of economics was developed by Kate Rayworth in 2017 as a result of the planetary boundaries. You know, having the planetary boundaries is one thing, and then how do you then have a model for economics that will support the protection of our planetary boundaries? And this is where the donut economic model has come, come into play, where like a donut, um, you have your planetary boundaries on the outer ring, and that is your ecological ceiling, where we need to protect that, that space for humanity that is just, um, and you also have your social foundations that are really important. And they range, obviously, from social equity to water to food, education, and so forth. What we want to do is ensure we don't overshoot the out outer ecological ceiling and we don't have a shortfall in your social foundation. So imagine if you overshoot uh, the ecological ceiling and you, you have a shortfall in your social foundation, the hole in the middle of the donut becomes bigger and bigger and more people fall in. And this is why it's very important to maintain these two boundaries. Next. So when we started to look at this, uh, a, a very good piece of work done at Leeds University by O'Neill and his colleagues has looked at several countries and you can actually go to the, um, uh, the website and look at every country that's been studied. And this, this data is from 2018, and I have to tell you, it actually has got worse since 2018. But only Vietnam is one of those countries that's still living within its boundaries, uh, and except for CO2 emissions, which is rising. 
But just look at Malaysia and USA. We are not that far off. And I think this is something that should bring all alarm bells uh, for everyone, whether you're an environmentalist, whether you're a development actor, whether you're an economist, or whether you're in any industry that is potentially a carbon emitting industry. And I think that this is something we really, really have to take very seriously because this has tremendous effects on health. We are just now moving from a pandemic state to an endemic state um, with in between outbreaks. And we are going to face another outbreak with the, with the onset of winter. COVID did not exist out of the blue. COVID exists COVID, COVID and other pandemics and outbreaks have happened because we have damaged our environment, because we have damaged our planetary boundaries. And therefore, the, the distance between you know, a, a, animal wildlife and humans has become closer and closer. And the zoonotic leak that happens when viruses jump from one animal to another animal and then to humans. Now, this is just COVID. I don't even have time to tell you more about other diseases. But let me give you another example. The use or the, the diet that we consume. Uh, one, uh, I keep asking people how much water is produced or rather is required to produce one um, Big Mac. And nobody gets it right. The answer is 5,000 liters. And that doesn't take into account the methane that's produced by, by cows. So until and unless we actually change our behaviors, our consumption patterns, what we eat, uh, how we grow our food, how do we move around the vehicles that we use, all this will actually have very detrimental effects on, on us. Climate change and the climate crisis is upon us. The air pollution has caused 7 million deaths globally. Um, there's a wonderful story uh, of a woman called Rosamond. It's a very sad story, but she has become the only person who's been able to get the death certificate of her child uh, listing the cause of death as air pollution. She fought so hard for this with the NHS uh, to that trigger for the death of a child was air pollution. So I think these are things that are really happening right now in our lifetime. Next, please. So if we are going to look at how we're going to be sustainable, how are we going to thrive as, as human beings in a climate that is so uh, dis destroyed, uh, you know, environment that's so destroyed leading to climate crises. I think we've got to look at the whole ne nexus area, which is really the, the prevention area in the planning of how we use our resources, both financial and otherwise. And I think we've got to really seriously look at this because COVID-19 is not going to be the last pandemic. The next pandemic will be upon us not too long from now. Uh, we always saw COVID-19 coming, but we didn't pay enough attention. We knew it was a question of when, it wasn't a question of if. Uh, WHO has already been telling us about disease X, which will be worse than COVID-19. So I think that, you know, that cost of preventing the next pandemic and the next crisis will really be upon us to look at all those aspects that I mentioned from my first slide environment, social behaviors. And if you look at the, the, the financial figures, the total estimated economic damage from COVID-19 to date, well, this was 2020, was estimated around 11.5 11, 11 trillion. But the estimated spending needed over the next 10 years to pre prevent a future pandemic is 260 billion. So if we do the math, we need to really put those investments into pr protecting the environment, pr uh, you know, en ensuring social equities uh, are there, reforming our health system to be much more comprehensive and much more focused on public health, we need to also look at global health as something that is also important to us because as you have seen now, and we've all lived through this, we are not safe until everyone is safe. Next, please. This is my final favorite slide. Tanshi Wahid has seen this so many times, but it's really to give us a bit of a reality check. We are so, as human beings, sometimes we only see what's in front of us and maybe a little ahead. So when we had the first outbreak, they said, wash your hands, all will be well, but look at what has happened globally. And we, look, we have COVID-19. And behind that wave, we have the recession looming in, in many parts of the world. 
But we have climate change that is, is upon us already. And I think there's failure to recognize that. And at the same time, and what's very worrying is biodiversity collapse. One might think this is an alarmist presentation, but I think what I want to say is, despite all this, we already have tools that are available to us that if applied appropriately, we will be able to really manage uh, you know, the 1.5 or at least not exceed that. But I want to go back to the first slide on behavioral change. No amount of carbon offsetting, no amount of carbon trading um, is going to make us safe. It's each of us, our individual behaviors, our individual choices that we make, supported by good sound policies on development and economics will really help us move along. So thank you very much for this opportunity to share uh, with you today.